guys, Jamie here, keeping it coy. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. So in today's video, we're getting back onto the uh, the Daphne culture that I uh, started in the previous video, um, and we're going to take a look at uh, what the next steps are um, to keep them alive, healthy, living, and multiplying like Daphne. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll go outside and we'll have a look. So we're back uh, and today we're going to look at step two of uh, creating and keeping a Daphne culture uh, for your fishies. Um, speaking of fishies, before we get into that, let's give the, uh, the fry some food. But yeah, the Daphne culture is looking fantastic, the water is nice and green. Um, I haven't tested the nitrites or anything in it yet. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be quite high because the bucket, as you all saw, was all filled with fish wastewater, basically, out of the uh, out of the filters. Oh, I'm on the splash zone. Just got wet. And yeah, they do like their, uh, their mealworms and so forth, and silkworms and. Do you know what this tub I, I think i showed it to you guys um when i first got it in a video ages ago it's from uh, quenny koi uh, and it's their koi treats mix a mixture of high quality koi treats in one handy tub and silkworm puree large shrimp black soldier fly mealworms and damaris but they really don't tell you everything that's in here i have found uh clam shells I have found with like closed ones, so clams were in here, but I have also found uh Nala, what are you after? Silly thing. But yeah, I found crab claws, I found uh, bits of octopus, I found obviously there's big shrimp. Uh, I don't know if I'll find find any of the unusual things these days, but yeah, full blown cra crab claws I found in here. The fish love them. Um I also found little starfish. Uh, found other shellfish that I have no idea what their name are. Look like mollusks, you know, like that stick on the side of the boats. Uh, I think, oh, there they are. Water snail shell or sea snail shell. Yeah. And obviously, they don't list all the ingredients on the box, but it's absolutely crazy. Oh, look, fish head. Can you see that there? Bit of a fish head. Yeah, definitely be buying this again. They absolutely love it. Yeah, let's give them a fish head. See, uh, see who wants a fish head. Ready? Go, fish head. Gone. Mm. Don't last very long. Yeah, I can't remember how much uh, this box of treats was. Um, I got it from uh, one of the koi shows last summer. Um, I think they, they were doing a deal at the time. Buy it was direct from Quenny Koi, but they were doing a deal: buy one get one free. Um, so I bought this one and got a tub of mealworms as well at the same time. Anyway, yes, fish are great. Obviously, it's what we're all about. But we're supposed to be learning about Daphne today. So let's go back and have a look at me bucket. One second. Right guys, so it's been four days now since I set up the uh, green water bucket. We've had the delivery of our little starter pack and uh, I'll show you what it's like. So we've moved the bucket now from round in the sun, which was just over there, uh, to now still in plenty of light but not in direct sunlight because what you don't want to do is the bucket to get ridiculously hot. Um, from what I've been told and what, what I've done in the past, you want to try and keep the water around 22 degrees, um, but a few degrees either way um, won't hurt. So uh, in there you can see a little bag. Let's grab it out for a second. Just like fish, you want to float your uh, Daphnia. So I don't know whether you can see them all in there. Look, swimming around. Yeah. So I just bought the smallest bag I could find uh, on eBay. Uh, I think it was about three quid, including the postage, um, or three pounds something. Uh, it's obviously not cheap for a few bugs, but 
if uh, if it works this year then that will feed all my fry for ages and ages and ages probably the whole year so uh, I've only just put them in the bucket so I'm going to give them about 10 minutes obviously being such a small amount of water it doesn't take long for them to uh, equalize and um, the water is looking a bit brown at the minute that's because uh, I just carried the bucket over and uh, just to give it a bit of an extra kick start what I did let me spin you around yeah what I did I also uh, I needed to clean this sponge out of the uh, backy shower over here fluff stuck to my finger yeah the backy shower it's still on my finger got wet hands but uh, yeah clean the uh, sponge from that um, also in the bucket down here and uh, yeah so that lots and lots of fish waste in there so that's a bonus that will help all the uh, little microorganisms and everything the water was green before I uh, stared uh, all the uh, mank up at the bottom but let that settle again and uh, you'll see in a little while that that is nice and green um, and as I say in about five ten minutes time I'm going to open the bag put them in and uh, let them start breeding and then uh, tomorrow I'll go over the best way to uh, to feed them keep them healthy and keep them alive so uh, yeah I'll snap back to you again uh, for me it's tomorrow for you in a bizzle catch you later in fact it's not a snap back tomorrow because we haven't uh, released them into the bucket yet so uh, I'm gonna do that any second uh, the water is starting to settle um, but uh, it's still not settling yet one other thing I did forget to mention if you are going to give this a go at home one thing that I would recommend you getting if you don't need it per se um, because I said when you're doing your water changes in the bucket you can literally just take the water out of there and pour it in your pond tank uh, whatever you want and obviously that will then in return put some uh, Daphnia into the tank um, the small amount you're going to be changing I mean I'd recommend one or two litres um, of water a week um, it's not you know it's only a what I'd say a 15 litre bucket so one or two litres a week will be more than sufficient treat it like a pond basically if you do a 10% water change in your pond a week do a 10% water change in your uh, in your bucket or bowl or jar whatever you want to uh, want to do it in but uh, yeah anyway the thing that I would recommend you getting if you don't want to pour the water into your pond because obviously there is going to be uh, quite high uh, ammonia and nitrites and whatnot in the bucket because you're going to keep adding uh, fish waste or chicken manure or you know that kind of thing as I say I'll go through their actual food um, in another video. I'm sorry I'm really squinting but it's uh, quite a bright day today I don't know if you can tell but yeah one of these it's not a fry net it's a, a very small handle you could use it as a fry net I mean it's about uh, eight centimeters in diameter seven or eight um, but it's uh, a water bug net um, ideal for, for Daphnia these, these Daphnia are the uh, Manga Daphnia, so they're the largest ones you can get. But let me spin you around before I release the Daphnia. I'll show you why I've got one of these. So, uh, yeah, the Daphnia uh, are just about ready, I reckon, to go in. But before I show you that, my bucket of uh, lilies and watercress next to it. I don't know whether you can quite see in there, but I can see absolutely millions of... I don't even know what they are to be honest but it's good fish food still and I have actually been giving some of these to the uh, the fry in the fish tank but uh, all we do look get your net there you go absolutely loads of little little bugs little fly larvae of some kind and by doing it via the net then all you need to do is obviously take your net back to your tank and release them and then you've got a nice clean net and all your wormies or Daphnia, whatever you're growing is then in your tank with only transferring the odd drip of water. So uh, without further ado, let's get back to this one. We will now release the Daphnia. So as you can see in the bag, look, there's a good 50 to 
a few hundred uh, Daphnia in there. So all I'm going to do is snip off the top. And it's not like uh, fish where you don't want to transfer the water. It's absolutely fine on this in this kind of situation. But all we then do is pour the Daphnia straight into your green water. Now what I always do is just rinse the bag. Not that the odd one or two Daphnia is going to make a big difference to your colony. But there we go. Clean bag, which means they're all in there. Now, I don't know whether you guys can uh, see them swimming about, but uh, I can. Um, so at the moment, the bucket looks relatively empty. Um, but uh, what I'll do, as I say, I'll snap back uh, tomorrow when we go over the feeding hopefully the water would have settled uh, a lot more by then and uh, hopefully a few of them that was in the bag were uh, already pregnant and uh, yeah I think uh, Daphnia um, are all female uh, when when they're uh, adults and they, they apparently how true or not but apparently they uh, lay up to a hundred eggs each I don't know if you can quite make out any of them just swimming across the surface there, but can't beat a bucket of water fleas. That's what a lot of people call Daphnia. Um, so yeah, I'll snap back to you uh, tomorrow and we can have another look and we'll go over how to feed them. So feeding your Daphnia, what you are going to need is two things, yeast, and spirulina and dry powdered now and obviously spirulina isn't something you can normally get from your local supermarket but yeast is and um, it's just normal dried yeast that you'd use in uh, in baking um, my packets of yeast and um, I buy it this way so then it, it lasts longer and you only use one packet at a time but all you need depending on the size of your colony you just need just a little bit maybe a quarter of a teaspoon I mean, you can do more, but if you do more, you can overfeed them. Um, and it's better to feed little and often in my occasion. I'll go through that when we go outside. But about that much in there like that. As I say, they had spirulina mixed in with their last feed. Um, last time I fed them, so they're not getting spirulina this time. Uh, but... It is a good good thing to feed them. I, I have seen people f uh, do colonies without spirulina at all, and it has worked, but it's good for them. So, um, but all you then do is get it completely mixed in, fully dissolved. As you can see, it's gone nice and cloudy. The water was ever so slightly green because I just dipped this cup uh, into the uh, blue vat, the pond outside uh, for some pond water obviously you don't want to use tap water uh, for this so always use your pond water um, or at the very least dechlorinated water that comes out of a dechlorinator not a mixture with sodium thisulfate or any other tap safe products that you don't want to do uh, with these obviously if that's the way you dechlorinate your pond that's absolutely fine but you don't want really um, them kind of chemicals uh, in your uh, in your setup for Daphnia, so if you have recently dechlorinated your pond, try and wait as long as possible before getting water out of your pond for your uh, Daphnia. Well, there's that. So that's their food for the next day or so. So I'll snap back to you when we're outside, uh, putting it in. Well, as you can see, the water in there now has gone crystal clear. It's still green water. Um, it's still got a, a hint of green to it, but all the algae and waste and everything has all settled on the bottom. But I don't know if you guys are going to be able to make it out uh, at the moment, but there are loads of Daphnia uh, kicking about in there. Um, might be able to see it better when we mix the, uh, the food in. So here's the uh, jug of yeast. I'll give it a final swirl around and it's just started spitting the rain, absolutely typical. And then all we do is just slowly mix it all the way around and in. Like that. 
and obviously as you can see there the yeast has clear, uh, clouded up the water ever so slightly um, but what you basically don't want is to sit there with a bucket of crystal clear water for days on end the day you come out and it's gone crystal clear again then add some more yeast and that is why I said a, a, earlier that I will explain to you um, how much yeast to feed them um, they don't eat it once it's settled on the bottom it needs to be floating in the water so basically cloud up your water with yeast or a mixture of yeast and spirulina just a little bit like, like I've just done today um, and then if you come out in the morning and it's crystal clear already then they've already eaten it so uh, add a bit more and uh, that is the best way to keep your colony uh, growing and healthy um, so that's about as much as I can tell you with Daphnia um, I will snap back to these it's a bit glary today so not really ideal but uh, yeah um, I will uh, snap back to them in a later video and show you how they're uh, getting on but guys that is how and now the rain's proper starting to come down I'm getting wet so uh, I will leave them to it they've had a couple of water changes so far and uh, they'll probably get another one at the end of this week so uh, I'm gonna get out of the rain and stand in the pergola so yeah that's that guys and um, that's how you keep a colony of Daphnia um, and once the colony is uh, a lot bigger I will see if I can get some decent footage of them for you so you can see uh, how well they're doing and uh, hopefully show you me uh, using them to feed some of the fry so again thanks for watching guys uh, stick around for the uh, end of the pond build and we'll catch you all on the next one.